I'm Andrew Young, and what I want to do is to share my poetry. And it's a project that I've been working on since I was in college. And over time, we'll be able to go back and read some of the early poems that I've written. What I've tried to do is to look for truth. I've tried to write poems that mean something to me. And I want to share some of this um, artwork with you. I'm a visual artist. I paint and draw. I have a company that makes stained glass windows. That's my full-time job. But in the mornings early, I will write. And I've been, for the last few years, I've been recording my poetry and sharing them with friends. And I get a lot of really good feedback about the poetry. And I thought that it would be important at this point in time to share my poetry, to get the message out that I'm writing um, about things that mean to me, uh, that's about truth and where we are as a people. A few years ago, the Mississippi Arts Experience Museum in Meridian, Mississippi asked me to prepare a stained glass window for the museum installation. It was a chapel and I wrote a poem when I was designing the stained glass window. It was called Father Mississippi. Mississippi is an art form bounded by mystery. The fallen trees and forgotten elders amid fertile fields of imagination, not held back by the hands of time, but enlightened by a present past that casts a bright shadow on everyone and everything, where the first shall be the last and the last shall be the first. Held fast by traditions that have proven to last, what do we see in the middle ground? All our lives around us of Calvary crosses, catfish, gospel blues, and hurricanes, where writers write and musicians sing a ballad not forgotten about eccentric notions of people expressing their oneness within a place none other than home. A friend sent me a poem that was a recording by Dylan Thomas, and it was a story of his childhood. And I loved it so much, I thought that I would try to write a poem about my own childhood and my upbringing. So that's the Next piece we'll read, it's called Cobbler Knowledge. Sunshine so bright that shadows disappear. What did we do when the summer stretched on forever? What creek was safe from our engineering prowess? What did fish think that succumbed to the taste of grimy worms? pilfered from my mom's pile of compost. Creatures large and small would escape our marauding plunder. The old farm with implements strewn asunder would only make us wonder about a past that could have hardly mattered to our youthful present myopia, creating a utopia that could only last forever. From the edge of the bramble, we collected blackberries and chiggers to take home to the granny with cobbler knowledge and skills so admired decades later. Then the mystery of wheels attached to mowers, bikes, and automobiles 
on which we rode out into distant adventures. It was time to test stupidity against the laws of physics, to survive with eyes, fingers, and bones unbroken, pressing hard against the future with all that youthful vigor. One of the things that I'm very interested in is language and words. I collect words so sort of as like a hobby. And so this next poem kind of expresses some of that. In the curious darkness of a moonless night, knowing if I wait long enough, the cacophony of cars and siren sounds will cease their harmony and become solos into the deepest part of the night in silence. But the measure of decibels will register the wind-rushed bamboo leaves and the nascent noise of the exoskeletal creatures of the evening. If I reach this moment, where will I be when it happens? Will I be the same as I was before I am now? Not likely, not possible, not tonight. What would it be being awake, painting, writing, gardening, making love? All of these things are in a state of connectedness, connecting with the moment. I am here honor another by connecting with them. Rules are made by rule keepers, writers, scribes, those that listen to the words that transcribe the message or bless. Consciousness in creative engagement with the here and now, not waiting for inspiration, but causing it. This poem I wrote a few years ago about war. It's called Mesopotamia. A war was recently fought in a land far away from my bed where I read about the history that has gone on so long before me. Two rivers flowed silently between the banks of reeds and trees, the noble Tigris and Euphrates, that saw our tanks and blood soak into this hallowed ground, that Adam and Eve one day walked upon. And the clusters of chaos so neatly described in war books of modern strategy, useless against the waning tide of history. Because we have seemed to have forgotten so much that what was once our dawn is now our dusk. 